In a previous video, we set up an ESP8266 to run MicroPython. We set up all the different tools so that we could communicate with the board from our computers, run Python commands, and even load files onto the flash memory of the ESP8266. In this video, we're going to take things further and set up a MicroPython web server using the USocket module and control and LED. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They're currently offering a great deal. $2 for PCB prototypes of any color. They have a great variety of options for your PCBs and the resulting products are great. You can also get the corresponding stencils and with great facilities and wonderful people, I highly recommend JLC PCB. For this video, I'm going to use the trusty NodeMCU development board for the ESP8266. You can find it in my little Amazon shop. Now that we have MicroPython running on our ESP8266, it's time to learn about some of the modules that we can use to add different functionalities to the standard firmware. To set up a server that responds to requests from clients over HTTP, we'll need to make use of a module called MicroSocket or USocket. So as I showed in the previous video, I'll go to the terminal and change directories to where I'm keeping all the virtual environments for the MicroPython projects. I'll make a directory for this project that I'll name simple server. The first file I'll create is a boot.py file that'll run as soon as the ESP8266 starts up and runs the MicroPython firmware. I'll use the boot file to connect to my local Wi-Fi network. I can also import modules to make them available in other files. As an example, I'll import the pin class from the machine module. I'll run a couple of methods that are needed before establishing the connection, define the variables with the network ID and password, and then make use of the network built-in module to establish that connection. Similar to what we've done using the Arduino IDE, no more code will run unless the connection is established. I'll finish with printing debug messages that include the IP address of the ESP8266. With that done, we can activate our virtual environment and after installing the USB drivers for communicating with the board, as I've shown in other videos, I'll go ahead and connect it to the USB port of my computer. Then I'll use the wonderful remote shell utility to establish a connection over USB and copy the newly created file onto the flash memory of the ESP8266. Once that's done, and in order to see the debug messages, I'll open a REPL instance and press reset on the board. We see that after a bunch of gibberish during the startup of the ESP8266 itself is printed, MicroPython runs that boot.py file, which connects to my local Wi-Fi network and prints out the debugging messages, including the IP address of the ESP8266. Now that MicroPython is connected to Wi-Fi, we can work on the main.py file where we set up the web server. For this, we'll use the built-in module USocket. We'll need to run a few methods to configure it and then start listening for requests in a while loop. Once we receive the request, I'll print it out over USB for debugging purposes. Then I'll work on the response that we'll send back to the client that made the request. Just to test out things really quickly, that response will be a simple string. I'll go ahead and save the file and using our shell, I'll copy it over to the ESP8266. Once again, I'll open a REPL instance and reset the board, take the IP address and put it on a browser window, 
and I can see the response that's sent back after the HTTP request was sent by this client. We can see the debug messages in REPL and if we go back to the file, we can work on the response being a little bit more interesting. To do that, I'll define a function that I will name web page. And to avoid writing HTML in a Python script and keep things more organized, I'll read it from a file that I will create a little bit later. Once the contents of the files are read, I'll return it and they will be stored in the response variable. To first make sure that everything is working, I'll create the file and it'll contain some very simple HTML just an h1 line with the same statement that we had before. If we save the file, load it onto flash memory, reset the board, I can go back to the browser and refresh the page and see the change in formatting due to the inclusion of that h1 tag. So finally, we can do what we set out to, which is controlling an LED from that web page. As I've already included the pin class from the machine module in the boot file, I won't need to do so in this one. I can simply set one of the built-in LED pins to be an output and to handle the two different states, I'll simply use two different URLs. As we've seen before, this will require for the entire page to be refreshed, but in other videos, I will show how to use Ajax, WebSockets and all the good stuff for doing things more efficiently. I'll use Python to search through the request string and depending on which URL was requested, I'll set the state of the LED. One more thing I want to do is show the state of the LED on the web page. To do that, I'll use a string, but we need to find a way of sending that to the web page before it's rendered. So if I go back to my index.html file, I'll go ahead and create the elements that I'll need the two buttons and a place where I can specify the state of the LED. As a placeholder for the status of the LED, I'll use percentage %s. It'll act as an operator when this content is read as a string onto Python. You'll see how that works in just a second. I can save the file and if I go back to Python, I can use the percentage operator to replace that percentage %s for a string that will actually contain the status of the LED. To show you how this works, I'll open a REPL instance. If we have a string with the percentage %s operator and use percentage and a second string, the second string will be substituted into where the operator is on the first one. So in our main.py file, the string on or off, depending on the status of the LED, will be substituted into the contents of the web page before it's rendered. To see it in action, let's copy it to the ESP8266, reset the board, then when we refresh the page, we'll see the two buttons and when we click either of them, it'll change the status of the LED as well as redirect the site to the URL that we specified with the onclick methods on the HTML side of things. So there you have it. We've set up a web server in MicroPython using the USocket module so we can control over Wi-Fi the state of an LED with the ESP8266. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos, and I will see you next time.